Hi, I'm Dan Deepas and I'm on the product management team at MuleSoft. Today I'm excited to show you DataWeave, our new language for querying and transforming data. The best way to understand DataWeave is to get hands-on and take a look. I've loaded up AnyPoint Studio and we're going to take a look at a very basic file transformation to start. What I've got here is a flow that transforms a set of items that were ordered from XML into JSON. Up top I have the canvas describing the flow with two file connectors and our new transform message element in between, which utilizes DataWeave. I've selected the DataWeave element, and you can now see the DataWeave editor down below. It's got three sections. The first is an input section, which shows you your message and what's available for transformation. The second is the DataWeave code. And the third is an output section that shows a preview of the transformation in the expected output structure. Let's take a look at the DataWeave language itself. It's a JSON-like syntax that's format neutral and is how you define your mappings. At the top is a header which describes your output type, variables, etc. And the bottom half is the code. You can see I'm typing an output structure here which describes an order with a book inside of it. And while I type, the preview is updated to quickly see the output. I can also change the top header and modify the output type, and I can easily switch between XML Java objects, or JSON. But let's look at how transformation actually works. On my left-hand pane, you can see that I've got an input XML for my payload. I can use the Define Sample button to create a sample input for my transformation to test against. You see that DataWeave generates a sample intelligently for me automatically, but I can also paste in my own. In this case, I've got a sample already so I'll drop it in. Now, let's take a look at how to access and transform this data in our mapping. I'm going to type in payload.orders.item. This is a selector in DataWeave and accesses the first item in the items list. DataWeave auto-converts the input XML over to JSON directly and the preview is instantly updated. I can also change this selector to select all the items in the list using the star. You'll see my output is updated to be an array instead of just a single element now. Of course, we can control how things are mapped as well. I'm going to insert the map command here and create a new scope. The map command iterates over each item in the input. You can see my output is updated to now have four empty elements, one for each item in my input. And now I can just fill in the blanks. I can add the title and price elements and access the item under iteration using the dollar symbol. DataSense is payload aware, so I can even just hit control space to get auto completion of properties. Let's go beyond some simple one-to-one -one mappings though. DataWeave has a lot of operators built into it to help with common transformation tasks. For example, Let's map the list of authors to a JSON array. You can see that the output on the right has Kurt Kegel as a duplicated author. DataWeave has a distinct by command for deduplicating input data very easily. There's also a filter command. Here, I'm filtering all the books where year is greater than 2004. Again, I can use the dollar to access the item under iteration and query its properties for filtering. DataWeave also supports multiple inputs and outputs. What if we wanted to join this data with currency conversion data and output the prices of the books in multiple currencies? I'm going to modify our flow to call out to a web service to get this currency data and place the result in a flow variable using an enricher. Luckily, I happen to have a RESTful service defined using RAML, the RESTful API modeling language. It just defines one operation to retrieve currency information. It returns a simple JSON document like the one here with the currency conversion rates. I'm going to use a new HTTP connector configuration which references this RAML. You see once I select the RAML, it pulls in the API's host and port automatically. And once I exit the connector configuration, it automatically can populate the method and resource to get currency information. Now, once I go back to our transform, 
this currency information shows up in the input context. And just like before, I can click the Define Sample icon and paste in my own sample. DataWeave supports random access to input documents, enabling very complex transformations. So now I can reference the second input just as I referenced the payload a while back. Let's iterate over the currencies and create a price for each one. You can see I've set the price to the ratio. Now I need to multiply by the item price. Because I'm iterating over each currency, I can no longer use dollar to refer to my payload item. So I need to give a variable name to the items, and I can do this with the using operator. Once I've done this, I can access it and multiply it by the currency ratio, so now I have a list of prices in different currencies using two inputs. We can also define multiple outputs. To do this, we click the plus button at the bottom right. Let's pretend that our boss wants a report sent to him based on the order which sends some aggregate statistics, like the total number of items. We can put this in a flow variable called report. Since he's an Excel user, let's make it a CSV file. We can add in a basic structure with the fields he wants, such as the number of items, the total order amount, and the average selling price. DataWeave supports aggregate operators, so we can quickly scan the whole input document and calculate these amounts. We can get the total number of items using the size of operator. We can get the total amount using the sum operator. And we can get the average selling price using the average operator. You'll see that my output is again updated to reflect these new numbers based on my sample input document. That concludes our overview of DataWeave. There's even more than I was able to show in this short time frame. We hope you'll download the latest release of AnyPoint Studio and check it out.